Today we're starting a video series about Chinese geography. I'm going to be introducing all of China's province level divisions. By province level divisions, I mean all of China's provinces, its autonomous regions, and its directly administered municipalities. This does mean we're covering mainland China only here. For each province, I'm going to be telling you which other provinces, countries, or bodies of water surround it, as well as some points of interest in the province and anything else the province may be famous for. Except in the case of the municipalities, I'm also going to be giving the capital and largest city of the province, and possibly some other well-known cities. I'll also be giving an explanation of the province's name and giving its one character abbreviation, which every province has and which is sometimes used to represent the province. For example, on license plates issued in the province. For some provinces, I'll also be talking about the languages used there. Throughout China, Mandarin, which is based on the variety of Chinese spoken in Beijing, is official and is typically spoken and understood by just about everybody. In some provinces, other varieties of Chinese are also spoken, so I'll be bringing those up where appropriate. There are also several non-Chinese languages spoken in China by ethnic minorities, so these will also come up for some provinces. Since this video is in English, I will be following alphabetical order based on the name commonly used in English. So for example, Inner Mongolia will be under I not under N for Ne Mungu, the Chinese name. And in order to keep each video in this series to about 10 to 15 minutes long, we will be splitting this up into four videos. And with that, let's begin. First, Anhui in Eastern China. Anhui province borders Zhejiang to the southeast, Jiangxi to the south, Hubei to the southwest, Henan to the northwest, Jiangsu to the northeast, and if you look up here, there's a teeny little border with Shandong. The capital and largest city is Hefei. Probably the most famous thing in this province is Yellow Mountain, or Huangshan in Chinese. Which is famous for its rock formations and pines, and which is one of the most popular tourist destinations in all of China. Linguistically, the province is fairly diverse, in terms of the different varieties of Chinese spoken there. In the north, different forms of Mandarin are spoken. In the south, some people speak Wu, also known as Shanghainese, since it's also spoken in Shanghai. Some people speak Gan Chinese, which is primarily spoken in Jiangxi province. And some people speak Huizhou Chinese, which is primarily focused on the area around Yellow Mountain. None of these different varieties of Chinese are mutually intelligible. The name Anhui is derived from two different cities in the province, Anqing and Huizhou, the latter of which is now called Huangshan City. The province's one character abbreviation is Wan, after the state of Wan that was once located here. Beijing, or historically Peking, is surely one of the most famous names we'll be discussing today. This municipality is, of course, the capital of China and has been since 1949, along with various other times in Chinese history. It's completely surrounded by Hebei, except for two short sections bordering Tianjin to the southeast. There are many famous sites here, among them the Forbidden City, Tiananmen, and the square named for it, several sections of the Great Wall, the Temple of Heaven, the Summer Palace, and the Great Hall of the People, where China's National People's Congress meets in modern times. Speaking of modern times, since the opening up and reform of China, Beijing has also become known for modern architecture especially the China Central Television Headquarters, a.k.a. the Big Pants Building. Possibly Beijing's most famous cuisine is Peking Roast Duck, which is served at many famous restaurants in the city. The name Beijing means Northern Capital. 
China's not the only country where the capital is explicitly named as such this way. Tokyo in Japan actually uses the exact same Chinese character to signify its capital status. In fact, when the previous government of China moved the capital elsewhere, they actually renamed Beijing to Beiping, which means Northern Peace, to show that it was no longer the capital. The People's Republic of China restored the city's capital status and the name Beijing. The former English name, Peking, is not related to this name change, however. Rather, it's just an older romanization of the name Beijing. The one character abbreviation is Jing, the second character of a full municipal name. Chongqing, historically called Chongqing, is the most recently created directly administered municipality and also the largest, both by area and by total population. By some counts, it's actually the largest city in the world, though this relies on including substantial populations that are well outside the urban core. It's also the only directly administered municipality in western China. It borders Hubei to the east, Hunan to the southeast, Guizhou to the south, Shanxi to the north, and to its west is Sichuan, the province of which it was part until 1997. Like Sichuan, it's known for its spicy cuisine, especially hot pot, which is where all diners sit around a single pot full of spicy broth and use it to cook various foods, like meat and vegetables. Chongqing is also known for its skyline along the Jialing River. Chongqing Rail Transit also has the most used monorail system in the world, lines 2 and 3 of the system. The latter holds the record as both the longest monorail line in the world and the one with the highest ridership. Far more even than the Tokyo monorail. The name Chongqing means double celebration and refers to the Guangzong Emperor of the Southern Song Dynasty being crowned first as king and later as emperor. The municipality's one character abbreviation is Yu which is an older name for the Jialing River that runs through the city. Fujian is the first coastal province on our list, as it faces the Taiwan Strait to its southeast. It also has land borders with Guangdong to the south, Jiangxi to the west, and Zhejiang to the north. Its capital is Fuzhou, while its largest city is either Quanzhou, if you count all people living in the municipal borders, or Xiamen if you only count urban population. One of the things Fujian is best known for is its diaspora. In particular, a huge percentage of the overseas Chinese people living in Southeast Asian countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore are descended from immigrants from Fujian. Fujian also has two different varieties of Chinese that are widely spoken, Minnan in the Southwest and Mindong in the northeast. Architecturally, the province is known for the distinctive houses found in some rural areas, circular ones known as Tulo. Fujian's name was formed by combining the names of two places within the province, Fuzhou and Jianzhou, the latter of which no longer exists. It was in what is now Nanping City. Fujian's one character abbreviation is Min, after the Min River that flows through the province. Gansu, in western China, has an unusual long shape. It has a short international border with Mongolia to its north, and domestic borders with Inner Mongolia and Ningxia to the northeast, Shanxi to the east, Sichuan to the south, Qinghai to the southwest, and Xinjiang to the west. Its capital and largest city is Lanzhou. Probably the most famous thing about this province is the Jiayu Pass, the western end of the Great Wall of China. Other well-known sites in Gansu include the Labrang Tibetan Monastery in Xiaha County and the Dunhuang Caves, which contain some of the best-known Buddhist art in China. 
The name Gansu is a compound of two Song Dynasty era prefectures, Ganzhou, which is today part of Jiangye, and Suzhou, which is today part of Jiuquan. The province's one character abbreviation is Gan, the first character of Gansu, though sometimes Long is also used, referring to a mountain on the provincial border with Shanxi and Ningxia. Guangdong is in southern China and is the most populous province. It borders Guangxi to the west, Hunan and Jiangxi to the north, and Fujian to the northeast. To its south is the South China Sea, and at its southernmost point is the Qingzhou Strait, across which is Hainan. Also, there are two borders on the south coast of Guangdong, with China's two special administrative regions, Hong Kong and Macau. These are domestic borders, but because of the region's autonomy in matters of immigration, crossing them involves showing a travel document, such as a passport. Guangdong is the only province to have borders with special administrative regions. Its capital and largest city is Guangzhou, and another famous city is Shenzhen, whose exponential growth began only after the opening up and reform policies started in 1978. Like Fujian, Guangdong is famous for its diaspora, especially in North America. This is why traditionally, North American Chinese food was based on Cantonese cuisine, and why North American Chinatowns have historically spoken primarily Cantonese, the variety of Chinese most spoken in Guangdong. Canton was historically sometimes used as a name for Guangdong, though more often it referred to the city of Guangzhou. Cantonese isn't the only variety of Chinese spoken in Guangdong. There are also many Hakka and Teochew speakers. The name Guangdong derives from the ancient Guang prefecture, whose name means wide. The prefecture was later divided into eastern and western areas. Guangdong is the eastern area, as Dong means east. The one character abbreviation is Yue, which refers to the Bai Yue people who lived there in ancient times. Going right next door to Guangxi. This is an autonomous region, the only one in southern China, and it borders Yunnan to the west, Guizhou to the northwest, Hunan to the northeast, and Guangdong to the east. It also has an international border with Vietnam to the southwest and coastline on the Gulf of Tonkin to the south. Its capital and largest city is Nanning, and another well-known city is Guilin to the north. This city is famous for its beautiful karst landscapes along the Li River, which makes it one of China's most popular tourist attractions. As an autonomous region, Guangxi is officially designated for the Zhuang ethnic minority. So the Zhuang language is officially recognized there, and you'll see signage in both Chinese and Zhuang. The Zhuang language is a Kra Dai language and is unrelated to Chinese, though it is related to Thai and Lao. As for Chinese speakers in the region, some areas are mainly populated by Mandarin speakers, while other areas speak predominantly Cantonese. The name of Guangxi is of the same origin as Guangdong's, from the ancient Guang prefecture, whose name means wide and which was split into east and west. Xi is the word for west, so Guangxi is the western portion of it. The one character abbreviation is Gui, from the city of Guilin, which was at one time the capital. Well, that's about a quarter of the way down this list, so let's stop there for now. We'll pick this up again next time with Guizhou. If you don't want to miss that, this would be a great time to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching. See you all next time. Bye!